In this video, we'll calculate the length of curves given by parametric equations. As a warm-up, let's calculate the length of this curve graph below. Since it's piecewise linear, we can just calculate the length of each linear piece using the distance formula. For example, the length of the first segment is given by the square root of y2 minus y1 squared, that's 3 minus 2 squared, plus x2 minus x1 squared, that's 2 minus 1 squared, which gives us the square root of 2. Similarly, the second piece has length given by the square root of 5 minus 3 squared plus 3 minus 2 squared, which is the square root of 5. We can make similar calculations for the length of the third segment and the fourth segment. Adding these together, we get a total length of twice the square root of 5 plus the square root of 2 plus 2. We can use the same process to approximate the length of any curve by dividing it up into n small pieces, approximating each piece with a straight line, and using the distance formula to find the length of the line segments. If the curve is given by the parametric equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t, then we can write each of these points along the line in terms of f and g. For example, p of i minus 1 we can write as the x-coordinate f of t i minus 1 and the y-coordinate g of t i minus 1 and similarly pi is going to be x-coordinate f of t i, y-coordinate g of t i. If we think of t as time, then this is just saying that t sub i is the time at which we get to point p sub i. Now the distance formula tells us that the length of the line segment from p sub i minus 1 to p sub i is going to be given by the square root of x2 minus x1 squared, that's f of t sub i minus f of t sub i minus 1 squared, plus y2 minus y1, that's g of t sub i minus g of t sub i minus 1 squared. Now the total length of the curve, which is called the arc length, is going to be approximately equal to the sum of the lengths of these segments. This is starting to look a bit like a Riemann sum, but it's missing the delta t, so I'll fix that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by delta t. If I suck the delta t from the denominator inside the square root sign, it needs to become a delta t squared, and I get the following expression. If I break up my fractions, I can rewrite this. Now there's something kind of exciting going on. This quotient here looks a lot like a slope. In fact, it's exactly the expression for the slope of the secant line for the function f that we get if we were calculating the derivative of f with respect to t. And similarly, this expression in here is exactly the expression for the slope of the secant line we'd get if we were calculating the derivative of g with respect to t. Because these quotients here are approximately equal to f prime and g prime, or more rigorously because of the mean value theorem, I can replace my expression with f prime of t i star squared and g prime of t i star squared, where t i star is some time in the ith time interval. Now exact arc length is going to be the limit of this expression as the number of intervals goes to infinity. As usual, I can replace the limit of this Riemann sum with an integral, where the bounds of integration are the t values that get me from the start of the curve to the end of the curve. 
This arc length formula has an alternative form, which is the integral from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. And these are my two versions of this very useful formula for arc length. Now let's use this formula to set up an integral to express the arc length of this Lissajou figure. Since dx dt is given by negative sine of t and dy dt is given by 2 cosine of 2t, our arc length is given by the integral of the square root of sine of t squared plus 2 cosine of 2t squared dt. We do still need to figure out the bounds of integration in terms of t that will make us wrap around this curve exactly one time. It's easy to check that when t equals 0, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, so we're at this point right here. The next time that we get to this point with an x-coordinate of 1, we need x equal cosine t to equal 1, so the next time will be when t equals 2 pi. Therefore, our bounds of integration are going to be from 0 to 2 pi. It's easy to set up this integral, but it would be very difficult to actually integrate it, and that's often the case with arc lengths. But we could use a calculator or computer to get a numerical approximation of about 9.4. In this video, we derived an equation for arc length.